Hey, this is just a quick overview of how to use Zotero. So I have a friend who's having a little bit of trouble getting started with Zotero, and hopefully this video will help her get started. Um, hopefully it'll help you too. So if you don't already have Zotero, you can go to the website, download it. It's free. It's easy to install. It's quick. Um, here it is. It's on my desktop. And if you can't find it, sometimes it doesn't automatically save to the desktop if you have your settings that way. So you can just type in Zotero and it will pop open. Uh, you'll notice that I have a number of different folders in my library here. And you can have different libraries if you want, but I have my classes saved into different folders in this library, just the base standard. Um, and it's just like Windows. You can add any new folder at any time. You can also move things to different folders. I'm not going to, but you can. You can drag and drop. Um, if you accidentally, for instance, accidentally say, oh, this is for the congressional hearing assignment that I was doing, you could do that by just dragging and dropping it into that folder. Uh, so I have the different articles that I've researched previously. And if you click the down carrot, you can see a couple of things. First, um, when you click on the title, it's going to show the information over here. And what do we have? We have the title, got the author's names, publication, when it was published, date modified, date accessed, all the things that you would need to add an APA style citation pretty easily. You can also add notes if you want to. You can add notes here. You can add tags and any related articles that you think might be useful you can add there. So uh, those are features that I typically don't use, but they're there if you want them. And I'm going to show you how to get first your articles into Zotero. And then I'm going to show you how to build your bibliography with it using the Microsoft Word plugin that you can also install. OK, so your home tab, you have these different tabs up here you're familiar with. If you've ever used Microsoft Word, you're familiar with these tabs. Click on Zotero and there's a couple of different buttons here. We'll get to that in a few minutes. So how do you add an article to your Zotero? Let's go ahead and take a look. Now, I'm a GW student. I'm using the Himmelfarb Library website, uh, which is our health library. And I've already narrowed my search down to only peer-reviewed journals. And there's something here that I want to change, a publication date. In healthcare, it's really important to get the most relevant information first, uh, unless you're doing a historical project. In that case, you can look at, at past data and past research. But I want to refine it just a little bit to only the last 10 years. OK, so again, I have my search term. If you're familiar, you can also put these things in quotes. That means it has to say single mothers and as a command. So we want welfare gap and single mothers. You can search for that. OK, so we have a list of articles. We're just going to choose one at random. Hopefully it works for us the first time. Closing the gap with welfare reform left behind. Sounds interesting. Let's say that I choose to uh, save this, or at least consider citing it in a, in a future paper. And we have these different ways to access it. I'm just going to go to Sage Journal. It's the first one. Error. Yep. OK. Uh, I think this is one I had trouble with before. OK. Not always perfect, but you can notice here you have a little tab. As long as you have this installed, this is the Windows Chrome Zotero add-on. And click on that. It'll ask you what library you want to save it to. And you have these options. These are all my different libraries. Again, the same ones that you saw in the Zotero Windows application. And it saved the PDF format. So let's take a look. Did that save the right way? And we have it here. 
closing the gap on welfare reform left behind. It's the same one that we were looking at earlier. And now we have two copies of it, but that's okay. I can just delete it and remove it from my Zotero uh, library. Not a problem. Okay. So now you have a list of different articles that you're interested in, in using in your paper. How do you actually do it? Back to Microsoft Word. We're going to take a look. So this is a research project that I'm currently working on. It's in progress. So this isn't a full thought out experiment yet. So we're going to ignore that for now. But I have one citation that I've already added. I'm going to add a citation to this sentence. And here it is. That's the citation that I wanted to add. And from your bar again, you have Zotero. And we want to double check to make sure. Oops. OK. Let's say we want to add this article. Looks interesting. I am adding a new citation to my paper. OK. You add period if you want to, or you can add it after. Add citation. You just click on this button here, and it opens a search box. Loan and partnered, and it's the first thing that comes up. It comes up alphabetical, so if you type in do or does, anything that has do or does in it, it's going to come up. So let's go back. Loan and partnered mothers. OK, click Enter. You see the citation there. You can add multiple citations to a, to a sentence by continuing. So for instance, if you want to say QUT, quote law review, there's that one there that you could add. And we're not going to do that. I'm just going to add this one citation. Click Enter. It adds it in the APA format, which is what I have in my settings, document preferences, APA. A lot of people use Chicago, and it has a citation style for Chicago and MLA, both really popular in colleges in the United States. And let's now say that I'm finished writing my paper. I feel really good about everything that's in here. And it's time to add my bibliography. And what we're going to do is click on Add bibliography, just one click. It's going to use your settings preferences. So again, APA. And it's going to add your citations in the correct order. In this case, APA is alphabetical. Some other reference styles are in order of reference um, it, within your paper. But APA is alphabetical. And it adds all the information that you would need. You can even add. A page number, let's say that this is a text. Um, occasionally, depending on your professor, depending on the citation style that you're using, you may need to add a page number. Let's just pick one at random, page 55. And it saves it there. And it's pretty much that easy. It's really, really easy to, to use Zotero and add citations. Um, way easier than copying it from an internet citation source and pasting it in. And there are different features that you can use too. So I was just showing you my school library and how I find citations using my school library. But you can also find references, possibly if you go to uh, New York Times, for instance. I have access to New York Times through through my school. And I have this article here that looks interesting, right? And I just picked one at random, 10 questions about Narcan. We have an author by date. And some people cite newspapers. You notice that Zotero looks like a little newspaper in this section here now. But if you click on it, it's going to do the same thing for you. It's going to save it to that research assignment. And we're going to take a look and see what that looks like now. This doesn't always work perfectly. If you're using a website that, if you're using a website that um, 
has an article, doesn't have a publisher, doesn't have a, a name, you can actually add all those things manually. So if I click on this, I can actually retype or rename a title. Um, if it doesn't automatically save, you can just click on it and add it. It's pretty easy. But here it saved it perfectly. So we got the title, we got the author's name, we have the source, and we have the published date. So all the things that you would need to create a citation. And it even creates a snapshot. What happens when you click on the snapshot? It's just going to bring you right back to the article itself, which is super handy when you have multiple citations, multiple resources, and you can't remember exactly what you wanted from a particular reference that you know you want to add to your paper. Maybe you want to add a quote and you don't remember exactly what that quote was, you can go directly to the link and follow it, grab what you need, get out. That's it. It's pretty easy. And I've uh, been using it for a number of years now. It's totally indispensable. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I think it's just as useful when writing papers as Microsoft Word itself. I really, really think it's it's that important. It's that indispensable. Uh, anyways, hope you got something useful out of this. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment. Hopefully I can get to it.